Don't get me wrong, I like a big complex pedal board setup as much as anyone else, but there are a few reasons why you might want to be a bit more economical with your pedal boards. Maybe you want to build a stripped down pedal board for practicing at home or for smaller gigs and jam sessions. Or maybe you want to create a bit of space on your existing pedal board for that new pedal that you want to add. Whatever the reason, this video should help you streamline your pedal board a little bit. Before we get into effects, let's just get the practical stuff out of the way. If you're trying to make the most of the space that you got on your pedal board, then low profile patch cables are a good idea. I use these Ernie Ball patch cables with the pancake connectors quite a lot. Uh, but flat ribbon patch cables are even smaller and stuff like that can sometimes just help you squeeze that one extra pedal onto your board. Even better is if you can lean towards pedals that use top mount jacks rather than the jacks at the side, then you can put your pedals right next to each other. Wampler pedals do this as well as Earthquaker devices and Walrus Audio, Seymour uh, Duncan. I'll maybe try and put a full list for you down in the description. Obviously avoiding unnecessarily large pedals is good, but personally I don't think there's that much benefit in going any smaller than the standard pedal size. Yeah, those mini pedals will save you a bit of space on your board, but if you pack too many of them closely together, then you're going to be tap dancing around and it's not going to be very practical. I like to be able to switch my pedals on and off at a moment's notice, uh, especially if you're doing gigs under pressure and things like that. Um, the only exceptions might be if you're using an always on pedal or if you're using a true bypass switcher. Wire pedals can take up a lot of real estate on a pedal board, so to get around that, it's worth considering just mounting the wire pedal off the board entirely. Remember, a wire pedal can normally last ages on a battery. It can feel better under the foot when it's lying flat on the floor like that. And most people have it early on in the chain anyway, so having it as the first pedal that you plug into, especially on a small board, is usually fine. Another option is a mini wire pedal, like this Crybaby Mini. If you're mounting something like this on your board, then just make sure it's in a spot where it's actually accessible and comfortable to use. I find the top right corner is normally a good spot. That way you're just mostly operating it with your heel, which feels fine to me. Other things that could save you a little bit of space are to make use of clip-on tuners instead of a pedal tuner, and to make sure pedal power supplies are mounted underneath the board when possible. I know, we all like a good selection of overdrive pedals, but if you can, utilise any overdrive you might have available on your amp as your main overdrive sound, and then consider using your volume control to get access to cleaner sounds. There are so many different combinations of sounds you can get uh, from using your volume and tone controls, especially if you have a Gibson control layout, uh, and they get very similar results actually to switching pedals on and off. Uh, I've got a whole video on that if you want to explore that a bit more. If you do use a pedal for your main overdrive sound, then just try and go for one that has a nice wide range of sounds on it, uh, so there's less need for multiple gain pedals. Uh, any of you who are familiar with the channel already know that I'm a big fan of the OD3. That's a simple pedal that uh, gets a nice wide range of vintage overdrive sounds. Uh, if, like me, you're a Boss fan and you want an even wider range of sounds, then try the Boss ST2. That's another pretty simple pedal, but it can go right from the edge of breakup all the way to ultra-modern high-gain distortion sounds and everything in between. The Boss BD2 Blues Driver is an interesting one. That can go from clean boost uh, to a nice mild overdrive, and on higher gain settings it starts to behave more like a fuzz and uh, try and have the same approach for any distortion pedals you might want to use as well. Uh, the Proco Rat has uh, a surprisingly good mild overdrive sound as well as a great distortion sound it's well known for, and on higher gain settings it starts to move into fuzz territory. Don't fear drive pedals with digital elements either. I find they add a really nice extra level of versatility to them sometimes. So pedals like the Chase Bliss preamp, uh, the Boss OD200, Strymon's drive pedals are all worth a look if you want lots of different drive sounds from just one pedal. For time-based effects, if you can get by on a three knob delay, then great. But if you want more functionality out of that spot on your pedal board, then I think a multifunctional delay is probably the way to go. Uh, so something like the TC Electronic Flashback 2, the Boss DD8, the Electro Harmonix Canyon, they're all really good options for that sort of pedal. They have lots of functions, tap tempo, they normally have a loop function, which is really good for practice. Um, as well as gigs actually, I use those a lot at sound check where I'll just put a quick loop on and then go out to where the audience will be and it gives me an idea of how I might want to adjust my sound.
For reverb, it's most practical to just use the reverb on your amp, but if you want another option, you can hoax a reverb type sound out of a delay pedal as well. Uh, to do it, you just set the delay time very short, set the amount of repeats or feedback quite high, and then set the effect level fairly low. So you're trying to kind of mask the sound of the individual repeats um, and try and get more of a, a wash of echoes. It won't sound exactly like reverb, but if you're in a pinch and you only need a reverb type sound occasionally, then it might just save you a spot on your pedal board. Modulation is an interesting one, but before we get into it, make sure you're utilizing any modulation effects you already have on your amp. Uh, a lot of vintage amps come with tremolo included, and that in my opinion is probably the most beautifully simplistic of all modulation effects. The obvious choice here might be a multi-modulation effects pedal like the uh, Electroharmonics Mod 11, uh, the Strymon Mobius or the Boss MD200, uh, where those kind of pedals can get almost any modulation effects you can think of. If you want something a little bit more streamlined than that, then something like the Electroharmonics Worm is a good option. The Marshall Regenerator is actually quite a good budget option, I think. Uh, if you want even more streamlined than that and quite stripped down, then it's not too unusual to find Chorus and Flanger in the same effects unit. So uh, the TC Electronic Stereo Chorus Flanger is a classic one, and I think that's analog as well, if that matters to you. And uh, there's also the Electro Harmonics Stereo Electric Mistress, which is a popular one. However, you can sometimes get a good range of modulation effects from more old school, simple analog pedals, if they have the right controls and if you kind of know what you're doing. Um, so understanding delay times is key when you're trying to understand how to manipulate pedals into sounding like different modulation types. Um, when you have a really short delay time, you get this zinginess um, that it has a kind of comb filter sound of a flanger. That's very short delay times that flangers generally use. As you lengthen the delay time, it starts to sound fuller and you hear the signals as two of the same signal kind of layered over the top of each other. And that's the delay time for chorus really. Uh, if you lengthen the delay time more than that, then it starts to move into a, a very quick delay that, where you can actually hear audibly the two signals as uh, separate del delay times um, and it sounds kind of like a slapback delay. Now most basic four knob flangers have a delay time control, it's normally called the manual control. That means you can get a really passable chorus sound out of those types of flanger pedals like the, the classic analogue ones like the Boss BF2 and the MXR M117 uh, by lowering the manual control so that it has the longest delay time possible and you start to hear it less as a comb filtering thing and more of two signals layered over the top of each other for chorus. Uh, if you want to know more about that and how versatile a flanger pedal can actually be, then I've got a video on that that I'll link above. It's less common to find a delay time control on chorus pedals, but some do have it. Uh, the Earthquaker Devices C Machine has it, they call it the, the Dimension Control. Uh, and the Dodd Stereo Chorus and the Maxon Stereo Chorus both have it. And what happens is you normally get access to either longer delay times, uh, creating like slapback delay type sounds, or you get access to shorter delay times where it becomes more comb filtering and it drifts into that more flanger type sound. And sometimes you can do the whole spectrum. I think the Strymon Deco pedal is one that has a pretty good stab at the whole range of those sounds from what I can tell. Now, if you're watching a video like this on pedal boards, then I'm guessing, you know, comprehensive digital multi-effects pedals like the Line 6 Helix probably aren't your thing, but don't rule out digital multi-effects entirely. They can actually integrate really nicely into more traditional analog based pedal board setups. I find the most important thing here is letting the digital modeling play to its strengths. Personally, Digital modulation and delays in particular, I've had really good experience with. Uh, they can sound fantastic, especially on well-designed units like the TC Electronics Plethora pedals. Uh, but even smaller, cheaper units can have their place as utility pedals. I used this Zoom 50G for quite a while 
for a lot of different sounds, but only for sounds that I used very occasionally, and it helped save a lot of space on my board. I didn't care much for the drive sounds on it personally, but the modulation and delay sounds, I think are perfectly good. Uh, there's also some decent emulations of some really cool pedals on there as well. I hope that's given you some ideas of how you might want to streamline your pedal board a bit and hopefully stop it resembling the control panel on the Starship Enterprise quite so much. Um, if there's anything I've missed, then feel free to leave it in the comments, especially if you think anyone else might find it helpful. And if you found this video useful, think about liking the video and maybe subscribing to the channel.